From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Brady Quintana, Dollar. Where you been, Quintana? You were supposed to contact me again later last night. Yeah, look, this is a complicated deal. It takes time. What's complicated about it? I'm looking for a guy named Tom Chase. You claim he's here in New Orleans under the name Tom James. For 500 bucks, you'll tell me where he's hiding. Sure, sure, but the problem is he is hiding too good right now. I think you're stalling. You uh, saw that letter his last night, didn't you? Yeah, it's Chase's handwriting, all right. I'll find him again by tonight. You know that bar we met in? Ace's Castle. Be there at 10 o'clock tonight with the dough. Okay, but you'd better produce, Quintana. I don't have much time. If Chase finds out I'm trying to put the finger on him, neither will I. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar, location New Orleans, to the Home Office Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Phantom Chase matter. Expense account continued. Item 8, 425. Long distance call to Pat McCracken at Universal Adjustment Bureau in Hartford. Pat agreed that 500 was a small price to pay if it got us a man who'd embezzled 120,000 from a New York investment outfit. Item 9, 370, phone call to George Everson, senior partner of the investment outfit in New York. It was Everson who'd spotted a newspaper picture of a New Orleans bar with a man in the background who looked to him like Chase. Everson had been afraid he was sending me on a wild goose chase, and he was happy to hear his wild goose had just laid a golden egg. Item 10, $2, assorted newspapers and magazines to kill time. Yeah, there was nothing I could do until I met Freddie Quintana at Ace's Castle at 10 p.m. Pops Harker, the trumpet player at Ace's Castle, had told me Freddie was a bad one. But right now, he was my only lead. The day dragged on. Finally, it got dark, and I was just starting to think about dinner. Hello, Johnny. Lola Chase. May I come in? Well, yeah, sure. Come on in. Well, what are you doing here, Lola? I, I thought you were in New York. George Everson told me about your phone call to him this morning. That you think Tom is here in New Orleans. Well, yeah. Everson said he hadn't told you about the newspaper picture before because he didn't want to get your hopes up. I know. He explained. I got a plane down here right away. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure that was a good idea, Lola. I doubt very much if there's anything you can do. I thought if you do find Tom, if I could just talk to him... Maybe I could get him to see that the only thing for him to do is give himself up and return the money. Oh, I wouldn't count on that. Johnny, I had to come. He's still my husband. Yeah. George Everson didn't go into details about the newspaper picture. Oh, there was an article on New Orleans Jazz, one of the New York papers a few days back. It it showed a bar scene, a place called Ace's Castle. And in the background, sitting at the bar with his face turned away, was a man George thought might be your husband. So I came down here. Now you have proof he's here? I think so. What kind of proof? Johnny, please tell me. Okay. But I'm not sure you want to see it, Lola. Go ahead. Well, last night on Ace's Castle, a character named Freddie Quintana contacted me, told me he thought he had Tom Pegg, that he was going under the name of Tom James. James? That's his middle name. Yeah. The kind of alias a lot of people use. But that's not proof of anything. Oh, I know. Then Quintana showed me a letter he'd stolen from Tom's room. An unfinished letter. I checked it against the sample of Tom's writing I'd brought with me. It uh, looks pretty genuine. What kind of letter? To you, Lola. Oh. Please. May I see it? Uh, Here you are. Lola. When you get this, I'll be far away. Don't try to find me. It's better that way. I don't know how to explain, but... I'm sorry. That's Tom's writing, Johnny. Yeah. What happens now? 
Oh, I'm supposed to meet Freddy Quintana at Ace's Castle down on the quarter at 10 o'clock tonight. I want to come with oh, you. Oh, look, Please, Lola. Johnny. Expense account item 11, 820. Dinner for Lola and me. She didn't say much during the meal. I, I guess there wasn't much for her to say. Afterward, we started walking through the quarter toward Ace's Castle. It's interesting around here, Johnny. Oh, yeah. The quarter hasn't changed much. You've been here before? A couple of years ago. Funny. What is? You, in a job like this. Why? You, well, I don't know. You just don't look like a person who spends most of his time looking for fugitives and criminals. It seems like such a strange job for you. Ah, uh, it's a job. Do you like it? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I like it a lot. Sometimes I don't like it at all. Like now? Like now. Thanks, Johnny. For what? For feeling that way. Well, I guess it's my turn to say funny. What about? You're asking about... Well, Pops Harker seemed to think I was in the wrong job, too. Who? Pops Harker. An old fellow who plays trumpet at Ace's Castle. You'll hear him. He's blind. Oh. Yeah, that horn of his has to make up for a lot. But why did he think you're in the wrong job? Uh, mostly because of the company I sometimes have to keep, like Freddie Quintana. Oh. I hate to see things work out like this. What's that mean? I mean, finding Tom this way through a cheap information peddler like this Quintana. Oh, if he'd only turn himself in. I'm afraid that's a pretty remote possibility. I know. He seems to have forgotten what sort of a person he was. After his arrest, he wouldn't even talk to me about it. I guess he's forgotten a lot of other things, too. All right, come on, Lola. That's Ace's castle right ahead. Do you think Tom will be there? I doubt it. Probably just Quintana. But he's supposed to tell me where your husband is hiding. Here we are. That must be Pop Tarker over there in the band with the dark glasses. Yeah, that's him. Come on, that corner table. This is the place in the newspaper picture? Yeah. Yes. I can believe Tom's been here. He loved this kind of music. Real nice, Pops. Thank you, Mr. Dunn. How you doing? Oh, pretty good. Johnny, I thought you said he yes. was... He recognized my voice. You still messing around with that mean one, Daddy? Freddie Quintana? Afraid I have to, Pops. I'm not enjoying it particularly. Well, you stick to the good ones, Daddy. Don't mess with the bad ones. Gossiping about me, Pops? Oh, Quintana. Oh, why don't you keep your face in that horn and out of other people's business? Take it easy, Quintana. That's all right, Mr. Dollar. I'll still be blowing away this year horn long after some folks quit breathing. Yeah, 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 sure. Who's the dame, Dollar? Don't worry about it, Freddie. Let's just say she's with me. Okay, okay. Don't be so touchy. Okay to talk? Go ahead. It's all set. Huh? Oh, yeah. I got this chase on ice for you. He thinks I'm arranging passage for him on a boat out of here with no questions asked. That's cruel. Easy, Lola. Uh, business is business. Where is he now? Now, let's not get noses, sweetie. Cut the smart talk, Freddy. My, my, you are in a pretty nasty mood tonight, Dollar. Yeah, so just stick to business, huh? Okay, okay. Here. Now, this is the address of my rooming house. Chase gonna meet me in my room at midnight. You be there in a few minutes before. And, Dollar... Be sure you bring a doe. You be sure you bring Chase. He's in the bag. See you at midnight. Oh, what a horrible person. Yeah, he's sure not the best. Johnny, let me go with you at midnight. I don't think that'd be a very good idea, Lola. Please. Why? Just say I'm pretty foolish, I guess. I, I just want to see him once more. Look, why don't I, you... I know it won't do any good, but after you take him... I probably won't see him again. He wouldn't see me before. He probably won't afterwards, but just to see him once more. Lola, I don't know what good I'd like gonna... to go back to my hotel and rest now, but please pick me up before you go to Quintana's room. Johnny? Okay, Lola. Quarter of twelve. Good 
This is the address, Lola. Quintana's rooming house. Mm, it's an awfully shabby place. The perfect spot for Quintana. What time is it? Five minutes to twelve. All right, let's go in. Number eight. Let's see. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Okay, we won't knock. There's nobody here, Johnny. Well, we're a little early. Okay, we'll wait. So we waited. Fifteen minutes went by. Half an hour. Do you think he was just playing some sort of fiendish joke on us, Johnny? I'd been stood up on deals like this before. But Lola wasn't used to it. Pretty soon the strain got a little too much for her. Please, Johnny, I, I can't stand this anymore. Take me back to my hotel. So I did. Now I was right back where I started from, with no leads. I decided to go back to Ace's Castle. That's where the trail had started. I sat there for a few minutes, nursing a drink. Then somebody slid into the chair across from me. You Janet Dollar? Yeah, that's right. Who are you? Lieutenant Lefebvre, New Orleans Police. Ah. Oh. Well, what can I do for you, Lieutenant? How long you been here, sir? A few minutes. Oh, Weren't you in here early? Yeah. What time you leave? A little after ten. Why? Where'd you go? To see somebody who didn't show up. Look, Lieutenant, what's this all about? You don't mind just answer the questions, huh? Who was this, uh, somebody you went to see? A character named Quintana. I was supposed to meet him in his room. Well, you won't see him by. Well, well, that's a sort of a long story. Look, here's my card, Lieutenant. Mm. Jones investigator, huh? You <laughs> mind come with me, Mr. Dollar? Oh, where to? Out back. Was a woman with you earlier, huh? Yes, Mrs. Lola Chase. I took her back to a hotel before I came back here again. I see. End of the alley, here. Huh? What's this all about, Lieutenant? Go ahead, Doc. Take a look. There were two policemen and a photographer in the alley, over near a doorway. I moved in close. A man was sprawled there, face up. Freddie Quintana. And he didn't look mean or nasty anymore. Just real tired. Real dead. Now, here's our star to tell you about the next exciting episode of this story. Somehow, I managed to parlay a scrap of burnt paper into a plane ticket for what almost turns out to be a one-way trip. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. Written by Robert Reif, it is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. <laughs> <laughs> 